The six epochs from Raymond Kurzweil's The Singularity is near. Evolution is a process of creating patterns of increasing order. I believe that it's the evolution of patterns that constitutes the ultimate story of our world. Evolution works through indirection. Each stage or epoch uses the information processing methods of the previous epoch to create the next. I conceptualize the history of evolution, both biological and technological as occurring in six epochs. As we will discuss, the singularity will begin with epoch 5 and will spread from Earth to the rest of the universe in epoch 6. Epoch 1. Physics and Chemistry we can trace our origins to a state that represents information in its basic structures, patterns of matter and energy. Recent theories of quantum gravity hold that time and space are broken down into discrete quanta, essentially fragments of information. There is controversy as to whether matter and energy are ultimately digital or analog in nature, but regardless of the resolution of this issue, we do know that atomic structures store and represent discrete information. A few hundred thousand years after the Big Bang, atoms began to form, as electrons became trapped in orbits around nuclei consisting of protons and neutrons. The electrical structure of atoms made them sticky. Chemistry was born a few million years later as atoms came together to create relatively stable structures called molecules. Of all the elements, carbon proved to be the most versatile. It's able to form bonds in four directions, versus one to three for most other elements, giving rise to complicated, information-rich, three-dimensional structures. The rules of our universe and the balance of the physical constants that govern the interaction of basic forces are so exquisitely, delicately, and exactly appropriate for the codification and evolution of information, resulting in increasing complexity that one wonders how such an extraordinarily unlikely situation came about, where some see a divine hand, others see our own hands, namely, the anthropic principle, which holds that only in a universe that allowed our own evolution would we be here to ask such questions. Recent theories of physics concerning multiple universes speculate that new universes are created on a regular basis, each with its own unique rules, but that most of these either die out quickly or else continue without the evolution of any interesting patterns such as Earth-based biology has created because their rules do not support the evolution of increasingly complex forms. It's hard to imagine how we could test these theories of evolution applied to early cosmology, but it's clear that the physical laws of our universe are precisely that they need to be to allow for the evolution of increasing levels of order and complexity. Epoch 2. Biology and DNA In the second epoch, Starting several billion years ago, carbon-based compounds more and more intricate until complex aggregations of molecules formed self-replicating mechanisms, and life originated. Ultimately, biological systems evolved a precise digital mechanism, DNA, to store information describing the larger society of molecules. This molecule and its supporting machinery of codons and ribosomes enabled a record to be kept of the evolutionary experiment of this second epoch. Epoch 3. Brains Each epoch continues the evolution of information through a paradigm shift to a further level of indirection, that is, Evolution uses the results of one epoch to create the next. For examples, in the third epoch, DNA-guided evolution produced organisms that could detect information with their own sensory organs and process and store that information in their own brains and nervous systems. These were made possible by second epoch mechanisms, DNA and epigenetic information of proteins and RNA fragments that control gene expression, which, indirectly, enabled and defined third epoch information processing mechanisms, the brains and nervous systems of organisms. The third epoch started with the ability of early animals to recognize patterns, which still accounts for the vast majority of the activity in our brains. Ultimately, 
our own species evolved the ability to create abstract mental models of the world experience and to contemplate the rational implications of these models. We have the ability to redesign the world in our own minds and to push these ideas into action. Epic 4. Technology. Combining the endowment of rational and abstract thought with our opposable thumb, our species ushered in the fourth epoch and the next level of indirection, the evolution of human-created technology. This started out with simple mechanisms and developed into elaborate automata, automated mechanical machines. Ultimately, with sophisticated computational and communication devices, technology was itself capable of sensing, storing, and evaluating elaborate patterns of information. To compare the rate of progress of the biological evolution of intelligence to that of technological evolution, consider that the most advanced mammals have added about one cubic inch of brain matter every hundred thousand years, whereas we are roughly doubling the computational capacity of computers every year. Of course, neither brain size nor computer capacity is the sole determinant of intelligence, but they do represent enabling factors. If we place key milestones of both biological evolution and human technological development on a single graph, plotting both the x-axis, number of years ago, and the y-axis, the paradigm shift time or logarithmic scales, we find a reasonable straight line, continual acceleration, with biological evolution, leading directly to human-directed development. Epoch 5 the merger of technology with human intelligence. Looking ahead several decades, the singularity will begin with the fifth epoch. It will result from the merger of the vast knowledge embedded in our own brains with the vastly greater capacity, speed, and knowledge sharing ability of our technology. The fifth epoch will enable our human machine civilization to transcend the human brain's limitations of a mere hundred trillion extremely slow connections. The singularity will allow us to overcome age-old human problems and vastly amplify human creativity. We will preserve and enhance the intelligence that evolution has bestowed on us while overcoming the profound limitations of biological evolution. But the singularity will also amplify the ability to act on our destructive inclinations, so its full story has not yet been written. Epoch 6 the universe wakes up. In the aftermath of the singularity, intelligence, derived from its biological origins in human brains and its technological origins in human ingenuity, will begin to saturate the matter and energy in its midst. It will achieve this by reorganizing matter and energy to provide an optimal level of computation to spread out from its origin on Earth. We currently understand the speed of light as a bounding factor on the transfer of information. Circumventing this limit has to be regarded as highly speculative, but there are hints that this constraint may be able to supersede it. If there are even subtle deviations, we will ultimately harness this superluminal ability. Whether our civilization infuses the rest of the universe with its creativity and intelligence quickly or slowly depends on its immutability. In any event the dumb matter and mechanisms of the universe will be transformed into exquisitely sublime forms of intelligence, which will constitute the sixth epoch in the evolution of patterns of information. This is the ultimate destiny of the singularity and of the universe.